TGIF. A great way to start the weekend. Yeah, it makes it hard to believe that winter makes a comeback tomorrow. So Evan, how does the rest of the night look first? Well, the rest of the night is looking just beautiful. We've got lots of blue skies across Hampton Road. Some of the high thin clouds out there. But if you're heading out to the baseball game tonight, looking nice. Temperatures still in the 70s for most locations. A little bit cooler up along the eastern shore. But the tide's home opener is tonight as they're taking on the Gwinnett Stripers. Used to be the Gwinnett Braves, now they're the Gwinnett Stripers. At 7.05, we're looking at temperatures in the upper 60s to around 70 degrees. Some hazy sunshine as some of those high clouds are streaming in. It's the big story. The big story is what's going to happen tomorrow. I've already got a few showers working their way through central North Carolina and some of those clouds streaming in and those clouds will thicken up later tonight and it's really a two part system that will impact us tomorrow. Got this area of low pressure spinning around across the south that will move just to our south and reintensify off the coast. At the same time, we've got a cold front that's moving in from the north that will drop temperatures through the day tomorrow. So we'll start off the morning in the 50s and even some low 60s with a good chance at some heavier rain. We could pick up an inch or two of rain into the morning and maybe even a thunderstorm. Notice through the day temperatures dropping. We'll get a little bit of a break around midday. But it's as we get into the afternoon and especially the evening with those falling temperatures that we could start to see a mix or a changeover to some sleet and some wet snow. I'll time things out with future cast and let you know what to expect as we get into tomorrow evening coming up in a few minutes. All right, thanks, Evan. We have some breaking news out of Isle of Wight County. Take a look at this. This is a large brush fire. 13 News Now viewer Pat McConnell alerted us to this fire after uploading the video to share it on 13newsnow.com. We called dispatchers and they tell us the fire is happening along a Hunt Club Road between Joiners Bridge Road and Carsville Highway. There are no reports of injuries and dispatchers say no buildings are in danger. New at six medical records of more than 2,000 people may have been compromised. Chesapeake Regional Health Care is notified potential victims by mail. All of them were patients at the CRH Sleep Center between April 2015 and February of this year. Officials found that two unencrypted portable hard drives were missing from the Sleep Center. The drives included patient names, birth dates, and medical records. It did not have social security numbers, addresses, or billing information. All patients impacted will receive 12 months of credit monitoring and ID theft protection services. Officials said Say they have made security improvements to prevent this from happening again. The mayor of Portsmouth addressed lawmakers and other city leaders today to discuss the state of the city. Mayor John Rowe wants to work on residential development to build up downtown Portsmouth. Jacqueline Lee has more on what the mayor wants to accomplish. Mayor John Rowe says he wants to work on residential development to hopefully draw more people into downtown Portsmouth. All roads lead to Portsmouth. And so began Mayor John Rowe's State of the City address. The message was simple, to dispel any misconceptions about his city. You might have a negative assumption about um, Portsmouth. Well, park that assumption. Look at the facts. The facts are really amazing. Throughout his address, he highlighted small businesses, saying they're part of the reason Portsmouth is so successful. His priority moving forward, he said, is economic development, which means recognizing the importance of the waterfront, where a lot of government buildings are located. You can't put a residential building where you've got an old jail. You can't put a residential building where you got City Hall. So the idea is to move off the waterfront and turn that property over to the private sector for development. Rose said the city manager has been authorized to spend up to half a million dollars to start that planning process. Our size is a challenge, so we're in the recycling business. We recycle land, and so our challenge is to find uh, what is the nest best use for a area of the city that's underutilized? At the Jacqueline Lee, 13 News Now. Norfolk's new bike share program is finally on a roll. Pace Bike Share launched today. 200 bikes are now stationed at 20 docking stations around the city, from Waterside to Young Terrace. If you want to hop on, download the Pace app. You have to be at least 18. The bike unlocks using Bluetooth. The cost is $1 for each half hour. When you're done, return the bike to a docking station. People were pretty excited about the start. It is about time. This is an awesome um, idea to bring to the Are community. you going to try it out? Am I going to try it out? Uh, why not? <laughs> 
Well, Pace is fully supported by sponsors, not tax money. The first ride is on them, and we're told they soon plan to add adaptive bikes to the fleet. It's a new idea in Gloucester, co-working space. Two entrepreneurs are providing opportunities for small business owners, aspiring business owners, and other entrepreneurs to grow their business. Nico Clemens shows us how. What are you working on today? You doing inventory? Okay, awesome. They're trying to change the game for business owners across Gloucester. The more people we can serve, the better. Right in the heart of Gloucester is Cowork Gloucester VA, a place for entrepreneurs, startups, and small business owners who need a space to work. Our heart is to provide a space that was like being at home, but with none of the distractions. Kevin Haggerty and Courtney Riley started Cowork Gloucester VA last May. They're both entrepreneurs who are passionate about helping small business grow in the area. Not only are we providing the space and that sense of community, but we're empowering and educating entrepreneurs to grow their businesses. Small businesses like cleaning sense. Sense just made sense. Penny Spiker and Kim Gelkin were running their cleaning business from Gelkin's spare bedroom about a year ago. There were too many distractions, so they jumped at the chance to get an office space at Cowork Gloucester. No distractions is the best part. Being comfortable. It's provided us the ability to be able to learn and grow as young entrepreneurs. Haggerty says right now they have eight different businesses represented at their space. They expect that number to grow. Every day that we get to come in and see business owners being impacted by having this space in this community is rewarding. Haggerty and Riley say this is just the beginning. And we do absolutely see this as a need for Gloucester. They hope they are empowering and educating young entrepreneurs to grow their business. In Gloucester, Nico Clemens, 13 News Now.